this video, we're going to cover how to use the find method in Excel VBA that allows you to find the first match or occurrence of a search value and the last occurrence of a search value in a data set. So you can see here we have a list of client payment history and right now this list is sorted by payment date and there are multiple transactions or payments made for each of these clients. So what we want to do is write code that will first sort this list by the client names so that all the clients are in order and all their transactions are grouped together by client. And once that is done, we want to find the first occurrence of the Parker group, return that row number, and the last occurrence of the Parker group, and return that row number as well so that we can then refer to that range where those first and last matches occur and copy and paste just the Parker group transactions onto a new worksheet. So we want to go into the VBA editor window. You can do that by going up to the developer ribbon and clicking Visual Basic or Alt F11. In this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert and then module. Now it gives it this module one name. You can rename it down here. We'll call this find and you can see it changes up here. So now we're going to type our subroutine. It begins with the keyword sub and then we name it whatever we want. Uh, we'll just call this find and hit enter. So now I want to declare some variables. First one is going to be our worksheet variable that represents the worksheet we're on now. That begins with the keyword dim and then give it a worksheet name. I'm just going to call this WS and then define its data type, which is going to be worksheet. We're going to add a new worksheet eventually and paste the Parker group onto it. So I'm just going to copy this and call this NWS for new worksheet. So now I want to declare a couple of variables for the row numbers on which the first and last match of the Parker group is found. So I'm going to call this these variables top and bottom and they're going to be as the data type long because they're numbers. And finally, when we paste the data onto the new tab or worksheet, we also want to paste headers from this first row here. So I'm going to declare the range variable RNG and that's going to be as the data type range. So the first thing we want to do is define our current worksheet variable. It has to begin with the keyword set. And so that is going to be equal to this workbook and worksheets, if I can type, and the current worksheet we're on now, which is clients. So I also want to set um, this range variable up here for the first row that we're going to copy later. So we'll set that equal to this current worksheet that we just defined. And that is going to be equal to range A1 through D1. So now we want to sort our data set by company name to get all of the company transactions together. So we're going to refer to our current worksheet and then the range we want to sort which is columns A through D and use the sort method. And now what we want to do is use some of these parameters you see down here. Um, we first want to define the column we want to sort on, which is column B, the client name or company name. So that will be key one. And you don't really have to use the entire column. You can refer to any cell in that column as the sort column. So generally the rule of thumb is to use the first cell in that column. So we'll use cell B1 and we could wrap it in the range object here, but what we could also do is enclose that in brackets and that will serve the same purpose. It's a little quicker, a little easier. So now we need to define the order of that 
sort one. So that's going to be order one. And that's going to be equal to ascending. So I have one more thing I want to define, but everything's getting really far out to the right. So I want to continue this code on a new line. To do that, we're going to hit space and underscore. And the final thing I want to define is whether or not we have headers. And that is going to be XL yes, because we have them. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and run this code because I think what we do next with the top and bottom variables will make more sense. So I'm going to run this. You should see column everything gets sorted by column B, and it does. So now you can see the Parker group is all together as one section. It starts on row 16. It ends on row 24. So we want to define our top variable. So that is going to be equal to current worksheet, the range where we want to perform our find or search, which is column B containing the company name. We want to find and we need to define what we want to define. So we begin with the keyword what and that is going to be equal to the Parker group. And we want to return the row number that that first occurrence is found on. We want to do a similar thing for our bottom variable. But this time we want to change the search direction from bottom to top because by default it starts at the top of the column and searches down. So I want to continue this code on a new line so I'm going to hit space and underscore. And then what we're going to do is define our search direction. So that is going to be XL previous. So now once we have those two variables, our top and bottom row numbers, what we want to do is with this same worksheet, we want to select or copy that range so I'm going to refer to column A, and then what I'm going to do is use the AND symbol to join that to our top variable, which should return row 16. So that reads A16, and then I'm going to use the AND symbol again to join that to a colon in column D, because there's a colon that goes between range references. and then I'm going to use another AND symbol to join that to our bottom row number. So that reads A16 through D24. And what do we want to do? We want to copy that. Once that is copied, we want to set up our new worksheet variable. So again, we're going to start with the keyword set and then new worksheet. That's going to be equal to worksheets and add. And now we can refer to that new worksheet and in range A2, we want to paste special and select this first option, paste all. So now what we want to do is paste these row headers that we defined up top here. Um, so we want to refer to this range variable that we already set up. And we want to copy that. And this time, we just want to define the destination, which is going to be equal to new worksheet range A1. Now, the names here for these companies are kind of long, so we probably need to also auto-fit the columns on the new worksheet. So I'm going to refer to the columns and then just auto-fit. So we'll F8 through this to execute one single line of code at a time so you can kind of see what's going on. So 
we already performed the sort earlier, so nothing's going to change there. But you can see right now, it's really hard to see. Top has a value of 0 when I hit F8. It now has a value of 16, which is the first row the Parker group is found on. So I'm going to come down here so you can see what's going on. So now bottom currently has a value of 0, but when I execute this line of code, it has a value of 24, which is the last row it's found on. And now this will take our range reference that includes our variables for top and bottom and copy that section. So I'll hit F8 and you can see it gets copied. And now we're going to add a new worksheet. We're going to paste beginning in cell A2 and that happens and then we're going to copy our range variable headers from the previous sheet into the first row and then auto fit the columns. So that is how you can use the find method in Excel VBA to find the first and last occurrence of a value in a list of data and then use those in a range reference to copy an entire section and extract it and paste it on a new worksheet. Hey, if you like what you saw today, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.